Here to me is the huge hypocrisy. Don't get me wrong. I love me some Tony La Russa. Is Tony La Russa in the Hall of Fame? The answer is yes. yes. Did Tony La Russa benefit from a lot of these PED guys that are not in the Hall of Fame? And I only bring that up because if the manager who won a ton of games and World Series with the Consecos and the Maguires of the world, and by the way, isn't uh, our former commissioner in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, right? Bud Selig. Bud Selig yeah. is in the Hall of Fame. Now, why is he in the Hall of Fame? Because you grow the game, you add teams, you had this boom. Bud Selig oversaw the steroids era. You really think he didn't know at all what was going on? And so my point is, if you're gonna if you're gonna leave everybody out, leave everybody out. But if you're gonna pick and choose and put in executives and managers and commissioners who all benefited monetarily, wins and losses, World Series from PED guys, how are you gonna keep the players out? The way Great point. Yeah, the, the way I look at um, the steroids thing is back when the story first broke, I was outraged. I was outraged. And the truth about steroids, and McGuire would say this, look, the, uh, the steroids don't make you make contact and put the ball over the wall. But what steroids really do, and, and this is why it was so widespread, is it helps in your recovery. You can train harder. Um, and in the beginning, I was outraged. How could they cheat like that? But then I thought, as I got a little older and realized I didn't have all the answers, that maybe I don't even know what the questions are, if someone said to me, Let's face it, you're sort of a mediocre broadcaster, Jim. Uh, but you could take this pill, and you'll be on network television. And by the way, all the other guys who want that network job are taking this pill. Would you do it? I, I probably would. And uh, so I put myself in that situation. Um, it's, it's a tough thing, for I think, for any writer who's voting for that to deal with because you know it, it, it wasn't a level playing field. But then, in hindsight, when you look back, we just know the tip of the iceberg with the Mitchell report and everything, but it seems like that playing field was more level than we thought because a guy, a friend of mine, Gary Bennett, you know, a former uh, Cardinal catcher, he did it. He didn't do it to hit home runs. He did it because he had a bad knee and he wanted to get his 10 years of service and he had to rehab. And so he did it really just to get as healthy as he could so he could take care of his family. Now, the other thing, so there, it's a tough call. The other, uh, to me, the biggest hypocrisy is the gambling thing. Back then, you know, num <laughs> the number one rule in the sport was, you know, you can't mess with the integrity of the game, and if fans don't believe what they're seeing on the field is real, then the game will die. So I understood, like, the death penalty is gambling on your own sport. But I recall, because I've been around a long time, y you couldn't even, I mean, they didn't want people going to casinos. Now gambling is a big sponsor of all the major yeah. sports. Huge, yes. huge. I mean, so when it became convenient to grab that money, suddenly that tie-in with gambling wasn't so ominous. The, the difference with Pete Rose, and this is why I understand the, what seems to be a vendetta against Pete Rose. And I know there's a lot of people who love Pete, and what he did was historic, and his, his performance deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. But... He signed an agreement with baseball after that investigation that he would neither say he was innocent nor admit guilt and move on. And from what I understand, baseball just wanted some time with him away from it and eventually. Th but you know what Pete did? He went right out and said, I'm not guilty. He broke the very terms of his agreement, and I think that ticked off a lot of people in baseball. And over the years, they haven't forgotten that. Yeah, I, I think this is a really interesting argument. I don't want to say I don't care. Like, if Pete Rose and Shoeless Joe Jackson got in the Hall of Fame, we would talk about it on the radio. It would be it would be cool. Obviously, Shoeless Joe is, is long dead. I'm sure Pete Rose wants to make the Hall before he dies. Maybe he gets in after he dies. Maybe that's his punishment. Maybe his punishment is they're going to wait till he dies to put him in the Hall of Fame. I don't know. To me, though, in a weird way, there's almost more more talk of him. Now, there's certainly people that hate him, but there's also, in a way, more celebration of folks like Pete Rose. I mean, surely, look at all the movies based on Shoeless Joe Jackson because of the scandal. So to me, both of those guys, they're a bigger part of baseball lore and baseball history 
because of their transgression. Now, I'm sure if Shoeless Joe still has a family member alive, I'm sure they want him in. Pete Rose, I'm sure he wants to get in the Hall of Fame before he dies. But again, to me, the Baseball Hall of Fame is a museum. It's the history of baseball. Whenever you talk about baseball, you got to talk about both those guys. So they're huge characters in the history of baseball, even if they're not in the Hall of Fame. Hot take here. Baseball teams that run bobblehead nights are artificially inflating their attendance numbers, and they shouldn't be allowed to count those fans. Also, we need Jim the Cat bobblehead night rally from this lockout. Cam's black friend from the fairgrounds. Ring it. Uh, You know, I don't really... Why do you have two bells, by the way? Because this is... got two hands. I have no bells. Because I've been in radio a long time, and I've never been part of a show where the takes were so hot that I needed two bells. (laughs) Okay. All right? I got a backup. I got a plan B. That was a good take right right there, man. Screw it up. Look at that. That was a good take right there, man. Seth just gave me a bell. Seth's got a cool sweatshirt on. What what are we... So... So the the take I, you vetted that right and you verified you vetted and verified which one it's we red. vet you and we verified screwed up yeah like, <laughs> I just think that's a funny <laughs> phrase that should that. You should we were you know what? we should actually again I'm always thinking sponsorships yeah I, I think that would be a fun sponsorship because let's be real all of us are gonna make mistakes probably not just every show but every hour yeah I would think every hour probably each of us will make at least one mistake, if not more. Fair. And then it's when fair. we call each other on it, if we had that sponsored, I think that could be a lucrative deal. Play that one more time. Let me hear that one more time. We right. bet you and we screwed up. up. Oh, my God. That's a pretty you know, good drop. That was it hardcore. is a good drop. And, and the, the, just so you know, like up. I'll tie it back. I always like to do um, callbacks. So the way I attack my coworkers on the air is I don't let you know it's coming. It's kind of like, when I played lacrosse, I wasn't really strong enough to attack a guy who knew it was coming, so I always blindsided guys. Yeah. I kind of do that on the radio, too. Like, like Cam's in my crosshairs on some, but I'm not going to look at him. And then when he thinks we're cool de la and everything's good, bam, that's bam. when I attack. If, and that's when you play the drop. If I was your teammate <laughs> in lacrosse, I would have called you a head hunt and haze. Head hunt and haze? Yeah, that except is, but that denotes something like... Just that, that I was so the, pretty. So the public that, knows you're dirty. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, but he that was been, like, ah, oh, like he's Greg a Greg Williams. Guy. If somebody said that to you, <laughs> hey, head hunt and haze, you'd be like, yeah, all right. It Killed the head I can only imagine die. the pregame speeches you made. It, it wasn't. It wasn't even like that. I was like, I was like a, a class C predator. Like, I would see who were the weakest one of the herd the is, predator, and I would go, you know, like I wasn't going after their good players because they were probably strong. I would find who wasn't the who the weakest in the herd, just so I could seem like I'm pretty. Pretty tough. So I wasn't even a headhunter because, hey, can you take out the good player? Uh, he, he's looking. He couldn't no, hit no. their head anyway. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tim Van Gelch chimes and goes, it doesn't make it right, Cat. The steroid cheats not only cheated the clean players, they cheated the history of the game where you could make a fair comparison of Ruth to pre steroid bonds. They selfishly destroyed that. Tim Van Gelch. I, you know what? I'll, I'll be honest about that. I, I, stats are. It's fun to compare, but stats are different. You can't compl- compare players. You know, before African Americans were allowed to to play professional baseball in the major leagues, okay, the talent was more watered down. Yep. So those stats are are different. Each era in baseball has different stats. So I don't I don't think they I don't look at it that way. They did cheat. There's no question about it. My question is, how tilted was the playing field? If Gary Bennett does it, and remember. There's, we don't even know who else was doing it. Like, what we know is the tip of the iceberg, and that tip was still a pretty, you know, a pretty sizable amount of players. My guess is a lot of players were doing Not all of them. Not all of them. And by the way, I will not name names just because I have no proof, but I have Because you can't vet, right? I can't vet and verify, but I can look at pictures of folks, what they looked like as a youngster, oh, yeah. what they looked like their rookie year versus what they looked like when they were 30, 35, 37. And I would put my entire life savings on the fact there are already folks in the Hall of Fame that took steroids. Do you think so? And I'm not going to name names, but again, I have eyes and I see how bodies developed the same way all of the people like Barry Bonds and Mark Dwyer <laughs> and, and Roger Clemens, the same way that we destroy those guys because they were caught. Yeah. There's a lot of folks that weren't caught, or there's kind of that. That stigma around them, but there's no proof. But the proof is in the pudding sometimes in watching a man's bicep double. 
Yeah. I'll hey, tell easy. You this. Don't pull a Wayne Hagen. I'll tell you this right now. Playing, playing <laughs> Leave Wayne alone. He's, that's why he's a nice that. guy. I love Wayne. I'm that's just saying he, made, he almost ruined his career because he... And look, you could always saying. tell. I'm saying that's why I'm not naming names. But I have a brain. I can tell how accurate do you think the eye test is? Very I mean, accurate. Jimmy. Because of, because in this country, like the, we do this all the time. Like this guy did that. This guy. I, I want to see the proof. And just because a guy got big, chances are, chances are, he probably took some sort of I'm performance. Yeah, yeah. Chances, but there are guys who have done it naturally. They're the exception. There are their body type is completely can, different. Can you know? Huh? Yes, I yes. saw a lot of naked dudes in the locker room. I I can go to the store right there and pick out guys on roids. You could tell they're poofy. You just know you, their veins pulsate, and they, you just know a guy who's naturally. You think I'm on the juice? Yes. Look at your veins are pulsating. <laughs> and look, they're pulsating with gravy. Oh, you could tell. You could always there, tell. There were so easy. There were. High school wrestlers and football players taking steroids. Yeah. When I was in high school, I graduated in 2000. There were college baseball players taking steroids. I had friends that played JUCO baseball. To play JUCO, they're taking steroids. As you said, when I'm, when I'm coming home in college, Cam, I worked at a gym. You could tell the dudes. Exactly. Because here's why. I would work at this gym for eight hours. You would see the dudes. Now, a lot of them are really hard workers. You would see other hard workers that were there every day. They worked out really, really hard. And guess what? They were big. I'll give you another example. they weren't example. nearly as big as these dudes who worked out just as hard. I understand there's some, there's some genetics to that, but it's not just genetics when you see. Again, I'm basing this on, look, everybody, you can get a little stronger. You don't gain 25, 30, nope. 40 pounds. No. 40 pounds in an offseason. There were articles written about that in Sports Illustrated, like this guy really hit the gym oh, in 1997. On. Just like the movie, the program. Then in 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 hindsight, you look back, you go, "How dumb were we?" No doubt. Listen, you could always tell too with guys at the gym because their neck's not that big, or their head's not that big, or their hands aren't that big, or they're right. They just look un- not proportionate, right? You know, you could tell they, they jack themselves up, and all of a sudden their biceps are huge, but their their head's small. So, like, you just, you're not balanced right. It's so easy to tell. And even a guy that's not that's cut up, and just the way just the way his build looks, the poofiness, it's just so damn obvious. You know, the first guy that I remember suddenly showing up at games, Jack, looking like a totally different person. You guys won't remember this guy, but, Nate, I know you're a baseball guy. Maybe you... You remember this guy. I mean, you're younger than me. It was a long time. But the first guy that I remember where he was sort of a slender guy, and then he showed up one year, and he was jacked, and he became a much better offensive player, was a, a guy by the name of Brian Downing, who was with the Angels, Angels and he was a catcher. And I, back then, no one said steroids because no one really knew what that was all about. And then the other thing that... I think it's probably part of the equation is human growth hormone, which isn't illegal in certain, right? In certain way, I'm, I'm certainly not a lawyer, but I know in, in Hollywood, a lot of these actors that are 50 that still look like they're 30 are on human growth hormone. I think if it's, yeah. if That's it's different, prescribed though. by your doctor, I, I don't know how different it is. Well, it doesn't make you bigger. It helps you recover, recover more. But that's what steroids, steroids, for, for the most part, that you get bigger because you could be back in the gym the next day as opposed to taking a rest. McGuire was taking D ball, but he was taking that D ball stuff where like it just they were taking horse stuff. You, you like you know exactly, like it makes you just like rah, your butt just so puffy and yeah you're you're recovering but HGH doesn't make you that strong. It just makes you recover and your body just kind of just all click it. and so you can't the optic wise you can't notice somebody on HGH. No, you can watch them skate and you can't won't stop. And if he gets hurt, he heals better. But if he was taking D-ball, <laughs> Charlie would be 350 pounds jacked out of his mind. So I a, saw this. With a small you-know-what. What? Well, because of that. I saw this uh, picture the other day on, I think it was Twitter. So I wanted to uh, look it back up and make sure I, I had the right picture. So if you Google Barry Bonds veins, I saw this picture the other day. Now, I don't know what year it was from. But he looks older. He's he's certainly a giant. I'm guessing he's in his mid to upper 30s. He's bloated, and it's a picture of him. He's kind of holding a bat next to his shoulder, but he's crossing his arms. 
And Cam and Jim and Seth and Nate, he has veins Let me that, look at that mug. that looks like Let me look at that mug. he wrapped his forearms in wires. Oh, my. Get on with yourself. Right? Get on with yourself. Like, that's not normal. That's not normal not. even for somebody that works out <laughs> Is a lot. it possible, though? Like, I know before <laughs> we take our photos for, naturally? Uh, for Bally Sports Midwest, I will, <laughs> I'll grab the weights, you know? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, and I'll do the reps. And so you can see a vein or two. A vein. Maybe Barry just did the curls, you know? A like vein. Just, just for the, you know, just for the picture. His veins are pulsating. They're not just pulsating. <laughs> it's from his hands. All the way up. You know, usually on your body where you have more fat, obviously the veins go away. The veins don't keep spider webbing up into your elbow at a point. That's just, look. Again, it's ridiculous. It's just not normal. And back then we didn't know that much. Okay, I was 16. It was the 90s. Now looking back, I mean, I always laugh. I always laugh when I see Mark McGuire and they go back to the 98 season. And by the way, I love that. I'll be the first one to say I remember being at my house watching that home run being hit as they cut Me into too. every single one of his games Me on too. ESPN, whatever it was. But now I'm 39 years old, and now when I look at him hit the baseball, I laugh because I see a bat that looks like a toothpick, <laughs> and I see mm-hmm. a man whose who's deltoid, bicep, forearm, quad, butt all look like a basketball. Yep. He looks like a bodybuilder. He looks like he has a basketball on every part where and his muscles are, hundred percent. And if you if you went to him, hard work. And J- Jimmy's in the locker room. If Jimmy, you went went up to him, just like touched him, like let me just poke around at you. It would be so hard because it's just it just it makes you puffy. That stuff he takes just makes you puff out. And it's like um, like you, you touch him, there's nothing. It's just rock solid, even if you didn't do a workout. Like it's so not to mention you get fat heaters on your back too. Let me throw fat this ass out there. heaters on your back. That's Put, pimples. Were were pitchers cheating? I mean, they've been yes. using sunscreen yes. and rosin it, all, since the beginning of time. But they you know, also... but there were pitchers that took steroids too, based on the fact that it helped you recover from your yeah. workouts. Not as many because there's certain things that in pitching you can't get puffy. It's yeah, it's much different than you would say yeah. as as an offensive player at the plate. But there are instances where pitchers took that again to aid in in recovering. Well, how about you know? There's a former manager here who used to catch in the big leagues. Now he manages across the state. Who said on a live at Shannon's Hadley? he would put <laughs> he would put razor blades in his uh, shin guards, and every time he would get the ball back, he'd scuff it up and throw it back to the pitcher. So, you know, there's cheating that's been going on in baseball since the beginning of time. Now this is a little bit more unnatural form, I suppose you could argue, but at, at the same time, everybody's trying to get a leg up. So you think so? Look, should the steroid guys be in the Hall of Fame? Absolutely, and if you have to Pete put Rose? it in. Oh, no question. Charlie? I think you have to put, for me at least, I just, I also want to say, I don't care anymore. I think it was 25 years ago. I'm I'm with you. I was faux outraged. Oh, this is terrible. I'm, it's 25 years. I forgive people. I know. I forgive and forget. Yeah, and look at all the other stuff that goes down. People are just cheating. Left. Everything comes out eventually. And here's where, you know, to Nate's point, I think, the difference. I, I do think the record books are cool. I grew up, I knew every single record. Like those numbers, 61 and whatever it was, 755. I remembered all those numbers. I was a dork that loved to look up record books. No. So that's been tarnished. But I also think to me it's, so I agree with you. Everybody's, whether you're spitballing, scuffing, corking bats, all that stuff that's been going on for 100 plus years, to me it's, what you're doing, does it change the game? Does it change the records? Clearly, PEDs did. Whatever went on the last many years, but we really caught it this past year with with the foreign substances, that changed the game in a way that was opposite of the steroids era. The steroids era was super fun. Yeah. This current baseball era is not, in my opinion, and right. I love baseball. It's so freaking boring because it's so hard to hit. Yeah. And a big part of that is in my opinion, the do- the doctoring of the baseball. So you, you, you've you gained an advantage <laughs> pitching-wise with all these foreign substances, but to me, you've also taken it to such a level now that the, the sport has suffered. Put them through. Go ahead. You got 15 <laughs> seconds. You got 15 seconds. Make it good. Go. Well, quit talking then when you're giving me... Go. Hey, you know, here's my take on this whole steroid thing, okay? Most people, if they find something that works for them and they find something that's good, they... 
tell a lot of other people about it. They're proud that they found something different. None of these guys who were taking steroids were bragging about taking steroids. They were all ashamed. They were all keeping it secret, which tells me that they knew that they were doing something they shouldn't have been doing. That's my take. That's my 15 seconds. Thank you, Cam. See you, buddy. How about that? Oh, I'm bad. I mean, wait, what did he say again? Okay, good take, but here's where I disagree. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't listening. Of course, they weren't talking publicly, but guess what? Yeah. All those dudes, I promise you, were talking to each other. Yes. Which is why you'd have certain clubhouses had more steroids guys than others. Because if one person <laughs> is the doctor and he brings in the stuff, he starts passing it out to the boys. I couldn't agree with you more. And just because it's not in the paper, you know, the stuff that goes on in a clubhouse between players, you don't know about, you know. Ultimately, ultimately, I think what gets very frustrating is that you've got a selective group of, of baseball writers who oversee this entire thing. And I think it's a travesty that people like... Uh, Vin Scully, Jack Buck, Bob Costas, Joe Buck, people who have been around the game. I mean, should Mike Shannon have a vote? Should Tommy Brenneman have a vote? You know, guys that have been around the game from a broadcast maybe element. Me. Maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. you. Okay. I was just yeah. about to. Yeah. I, I'll pump Emmy, you up, Jimmy. You're an Emmy guy. Definitely Danny Mac. Now you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Danny Mac, that's fair. Well, you said he's the most talented guy you've ever All right, so here's my, maybe here's my fix, okay? Because, Nate, you brought up good points. And like I said, I used to be outraged, and over the years, I – you know, especially the world changes. You find out no one's perfect. You know, everyone is human. Maybe it's time to just let <laughs> let let them in. And the numbers, you, you can't judge one error to another anyway. And then uh, here's an idea, and just see what you think. So what say? Because you're right, Charlie. There's there's some uh, an offensive struggle going on right now. What if you let steroids back in and? You don't monitor the pitchers doctoring the ball. So let that kind of battle. So you have the steroids. So back in. We've been saying this Pump for up, years, boys. Jimmy. And you then the pitchers, us. And then the pitchers, go ahead and throw your stuff. What do you mean you've been saying that We've been. Years? We. I wanted a steroid <laughs> NFL league. I want a steroid NHL league. Like crazy stuff, just like the one up in Quebec. We've been saying that. And somebody else chimes in and goes, a lot of cheating in NASCAR, too. Really? With the cars? <laughs> Well, I guess I'm sure well, they're. I'm sure you're trying. We can to... ask uh, Kenny about that, but that happens all the time. Where after a race, sometimes they'll say, "Hey, your car, the specs, something was wrong there." Yeah, and yeah. They get oh, penalized. Yeah. Big Your distributor you have, plate. You have crew chiefs that get suspended. Yeah, that yeah. happens all the horse time. Horse racing. Horse racing. Uh, McGuire looked like an NFL blitz character. <laughs> he did, man. <laughs> you know, the, the I, here's where I credit Mark McGuire. Okay, he he wasn't the friendliest guy as a player when he was going through. I get there was a lot of pressure, but he was not nice. But when he came back, okay, and it kind of rocked the baseball world, and he answered the questions, and it was every media guy wanting to get his pound of flesh, yep. maybe asking the question that set McGuire off. So, I mean, McGuire had a lot of patience, and he treated people well, and he answered every question. And at first, when he first had his little news conference, you, you couldn't get a mic in there. Yep. There were so many people. And then at spring training... The, the writers would fly in, you know, and the next day there'd be 30 people. And then one day, and I was there when Brian Bartow, the media relations director for the Cardinals, said, because they would, Mark would always make himself available to answer. You might not like his answer. You might have said his answer, but he would look in the eye and he would answer the questions. And then one day, because they'd always say, Mark's leaving. One day, Brian Bartow said, Mark is leaving. Does, does anyone need Mark McGuire? And no one needed him. And I thought to myself, it'll, it'll, it, during the regular season, there'll be some more. But he's made it back. He worked it. He made himself back in baseball. And you know, it has nothing to do with the Hall it. of Fame. But he is now part of baseball. And that's, that's where he did his apology tour. And he, he doesn't need the money. And he came back and was a hitting coach and then a bench coach. And he yeah. got back into baseball. For the love of the sport, and yep. I'm also sh guessing too that he want he wanted to kind of make amends for for what happened and, and explain that. And again, that was 25 years ago. We move on, and I know we're we're trying to break. My last point would be this: it's hard for me to really rip on folks when again I sucked at the sport, and I know if I was better, and I was borderline AAA player that couldn't make the majors, and I thought. I was steroids away, 
from making forty thousand dollars a year or potentially five hundred thousand, I probably would have taken that. I would. I would. So it's hard for me to rip on people when if I was put in that spot, if that's between man, if you think that's the last thing that gets you to the show, I think I think most people take that. I hate to yeah, say it. I growing up, I never really saw too many people take steroids. <laughs> We would we would do in juniors, would take like energy pills like Ultimate Orange and stuff like that. But right when I got in the NHL, we started getting drug tested three times a year randomly. So they would test for any performance enhancing anything, and then it got more strict and more strict. You could still smoke weed. You could have THC in your system and stuff like that. They weren't hard on that, which is, you know, you got you're talking Canadians like a lot of guys do. Um, but we they were. Certainly strict on it, but HGH was probably a different story in NHL because I, I think you have to take blood work to, to test that, so guys could probably get around it. But honestly, except for some crazy heavyweights I had to fight in juniors and, and when I played here in the Sting where you just know they're on roids, you didn't see it that much in the NHL, at least when I played. Even maybe back in the 90s, some of the cats did it, but it wasn't that prominent in the NHL because you, you can't just get that big and, and be, you have to be agile no, out there, but too. It, you know, one of the things that Conseco said, and I know he's crazy, and <laughs> but he said yeah. when he first came out, and it, it was kind of true, if you, and I'll get to the, to the counter in a second, but if you cycle on and off and you're, and you're in control of your cycle, you can, you can maintain the growth, and there, there, if you cycle off properly, there probably won't be long-term damage there, you know, to your body. It's yeah. obviously a dangerous substance. But you can. But the problem is, you get psychologically addicted to it, where it, you don't cycle off because you think you're losing something or you're getting weaker. Yeah. But you can, if you cycle properly, you can get the benefits of being able to recover quickly without getting huge. The problem is, it, there's a psychological element that oh. prevents you from doing it. Properly. Superman. It's yep. the Superman. Theory. No doubt about it. You feel like you are indestructible, and if you don't have it, you feel weak. And yeah. that's why so many guys have had bad. Um, in in a long term health effects because they overdid it or they you know they they didn't do it properly which may not be possible based on the fact that you feel weaker when you cycle yeah. off you cycle off of that no even if you can't really tell you in your mind your mind can play tricks on you anyway you're like I know I'm a step behind now and even having that in the back of your head going and leading into a game could just screw you right up it gives like after I decide I'll have a salad today I look in the mirror and I go. That really helped. I look great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ben Zobers, Cuck Pastor Chimes, and goes, SNL, all drug Olympic team did it best. Let them do what they want to their bodies. I saw that many years Was ago. It good? I'm gonna check I did that a weightlifting thing yeah. where the guy lifted and, and his arms came out of his socket. Can I, <laughs> can I just put, one, I can I put one bow on this? I would just say that I think the fans uh, don't care about how the players treat the media. I think that the fans deserve, because the game is all about the fans, the fans deserve to have the best players in that have played at the highest level be elevated to the highest achievement, which would be yeah. the Hall of Fame. Enter, yeah. Oh, okay, and that's yeah. what they should be judged on. They should be judged. Forget. I'm sorry. They just shouldn't be judged on their relationship with the media. They should be judged on what they did on the field. Oh, we got a bunch of notes here, by the way. Uh, you, you, you have you, a you, vendetta against no, writers. I do. I think Some I think of them drive you crazy. I think they're petty. They I are. I think they're petty. Sometimes. Not all writers here. We no, love. No, no, no. Tom Timmerman and, and, and uh, JR and all those. We, we know everybody here. But some of them I are. Think, I think JR is evil. I'll yeah, I know. Right I'll now. smack him around. He's an evil guy. He put a huge hockey thing you in agree, his basement. 100%. I mean, when I think about just... Oh, and Matty Whitener, too, by yeah. the way. When I think about pure evil, I think of Jeremy Rutherford. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give you a ring on that. Oh, uh, Matty chimed in and goes, lots of those cats from the WWF in the 90s died doing roads, roids the wrong way uh, far too long. Yeah. Oh, my. They lived till about 55. Though. So, you know, you talk to. I'm not into pro wrestling. I mean, I'm aware of the oh, big names. You can mad, but, Matt, he loves but, it. But if you like, <laughs> ask about, hey, whatever happened to this guy? He's dead. You know, they're dead. They're, they're dead. all dead. And then there's there's something. Matty probably has seen this. I, I don't even know what channel it's on. I flip around because I'm an old instead yeah. of looking at the guide. And they have this show TV called guide? like Dark Side of the Ring or something. Yes. And it's all these like things about. I mean, just the awful side oh. of wrestling, the scary thing. And those guys. Like the guys who never made it to the big time, traveling year round, you know, suffering un un all kinds of injuries and making Nasty. no money. If Nasty I'm not mistaken, I know we need to vet and verify. I believe it was Deadspin that back in the day had a series called something along the lines of Today's Dead Wrestler. It yep. was something like that yep. because it seemed like once a month that one of these iconic wrestlers that we watched in the 80s and 90s died at the age of between 40 and 50. 60. Yeah. 
from something crazy, and a lot of times there was a really bad story going along with it. Chris Benoit, you screwed up. Thank you. You screwed up. I don't think I did there, though. No, you didn't. Dude, I, no, no, you didn't. Chris Benoit, scary story. Um, but yeah, the, oh, how about even the Mickey Rourke movie? Which was actually really good. The great movie. I just watched it again on the it's flight. It's really good. Yeah, great. great I mean, movie. but it's so down. You're just down and dark, and you're cutting yourself, and you're this, and you're just like black. You're not making. It's just like being in a band before you make it. You're 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 going to the the BP on 44 to shower from the sink. It's just it's horrible life. It really really is. All right. Can I wait? Wait, no, Go I ahead, have baby. to tell you this. Yeah. Okay, because the life of a sideline reporter isn't so glamorous. One time in the playoffs, <laughs> one year, right. After the champagne dousing and everything, yeah. I'm not going to go into the player shower. Usually there's like a dressing room or somewhere I could shower and change for the flight. Forget what building we were in, what stadium. They did not, they did not have that. And I'm, I mean, I'm oh, sticky. I'm, sticky. Ugh. And I had to shower in a sink in a public restroom where the stadium workers, the stadium uh-huh. workers were going to the bathroom. Here's the sideline guy washing up in uh. a sink. I mean, I mean. It was very degrading, but that's the dark side. That's the dark that's tough, side that of sideline reporting. That was a tough night for you. That was a th- and plus, you got champagne in your eye. Dead Russell of the Week uh, archive. Yeah, dude. It's dude steroids, man. I'm telling you. Spartan 4-4 champs. goes, the Hall of Fame votes should be taken away from the riders and put into players' hands. They know who the best of the best when they played against them. Final, 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 final thought. Point. We got to go. And you got to final, do your, uh, final, go. final point. Yep. Here's another thing. And I love all the riders. I think we have great writers here. Great writers but here. But overall, like also, these writers, in every market, they're also trying to get every single borderline guy on their team in. <laughs> Let's be real. And I don't care. I've always said this. If an 87-year-old dude is going to die soon and he and his family have a great weekend in Cooperstown and they get in the Hall of Fame, I don't care. I don't want to take that from them. But let's also recognize that we're putting in every single borderline guy. We're watering that thing the hell down. We just are. It's 100% true. Well, how about you don't I vote agree. for anybody on your team? Or how does that work? Well, I'm saying I get it. Look, Scott Rowland deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, but he's also the candidate you have a discussion about. There's a Scott Rowland in every market that doesn't quite have Scott Rowland's numbers, and every writing group from every 30, all the markets, want to get their borderline guys in, and all of their fans want that guy in. And to me, that means all these guys that are – borderline, every single one of them eventually, they're all getting it. You know, the difference, though, is, and it's, to me, the same with, with Edmonds. You could be borderline with one set of stats, but if you are the gold standard for your entire career defensively and you have great offensive stats, there's not someone like that in every market. Okay, final, 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 final. <laughs> Here's what I'll say. You, are you laughing at me, Nate? No, I'm laughing because I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to get some like Hall of Fame music. You know when a speech gets too long? Yeah. No, I, 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 I'm music. trying. This dude. is all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> throw, throw a bunch of names Thank recently, <laughs> and I'm not disparaging anyone alone. But if you throw in Jim Cott, Ted Simmons, a Scott Rowland, if he gets in, other borderline-ish candidates, all of them are getting in. They're all eventually getting in. That wasn't always the case. I'm not saying they're not all deserving. Some of them are, but we're watering down the Hall of Fame. I think everybody who kind of watches who's getting in recently, it's no longer the greatest of the great. And I'm fine with that, but let's, let's, let's not pretend. Why do you hate the Cardinals? Yeah, why do you hate everything?